Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is the Ukraine War Sit Rep Summary for the day of 283 to 285 for the 3rd to the 5th December 2022 and uh, the before I start off, uh, we in the last video, you know, we celebrated the 50,000 subs and then we are going for the 100,000 subs target and we are going for some, something very ambitious which is by the end of this month and um and i said that we need five thousand likes per video guys we have lost our first battle to the youtube youtube shadow banning unit uh, i can't believe the first battle we have already lost anyway let's start off with ukrainian drone strikes the ukrainians have launched a surprise drone strike that was actually you know reverberated across the entire world uh i just now i went to the gym i actually saw the local singapore news reporting on it that the ukrainians have launched a drone strike far away from their borders hitting uh this airfield here uh this this is uh at Diagilevo, Diagilevo, Diagilevo air base at the ryazan region in russia and uh in this ha happened in the morning they said that the russians actually said it's actually soviet made uavs so uh and uh so you know uh the you some i remember seeing some pro ukrainians saying that uh it's not soviet made uh, but it's actually you know some uh, new suicide drone or you know, some s new secret new thingy i don't know so anyway uh the edit the reportedly the air defense actually intercepted and somehow still managed to kill some people so uh four i think three died and uh four were wounded so it did and then the, this is just one of the target the other target was actually at saratov at the angles or or i think they also say this is eagles but i think maybe it has a typo angles uh, air base at saratov and uh it's the same report so basically i think the one that went viral is actually uh, this one so they actually say you know oh there's a black mark here and a black mark here and then something like this and then oh but it was underwhelming if you ask me uh the, the people are you know i i think the people who support ukraine are very excited you know, wow they, we managed to attack something so far away like five six hundred kilometers away from the front line uh, but the reality is that is just two small little drones hitting air bases killing a few personnel hardly destroyed the air the the airplane uh it just merely damaged it a little bit and that's it that's about it and it what it begets is a massive missile strike across the entire of ukraine all over again uh internet uh has dropped you no know, power supplies has been cut and uh so i didn't see this at the victory i'm not sure i it, it is a pr thing you know uh, because it does reverberate uh, across the entire world this news and um but militarily speaking this is pointless and moving on to uh the ukrainians um shooting down a uh, ka-52 no this this actually came out uh in a footage uh that went viral of a, a explosion far far away and then someone actually very excited uh there's also claims that this shot down by the the german uh german made uh gun uh, i mean I, I don't really believe that's the case but anyway um so that's that i'm not exactly sure the exact location though it's actually uh hit, hit by the Dnieper anti-aircraft missile brigade so but of course this missile brigade can be deployed anywhere so i'm not too sure exactly where the shutdown is and uh please press the like button please do not let the dpa army lose this second battle as well no we cannot lose to the youtube shadow banning unit the youtube svu no this humiliating we must get 5000 likes so anyway, uh, at the southern front, not, uh, there's nothing to report. Uh, nothing is happening over at the Zaporizhia line as well. And uh, over at the Donetsk front, the Ukrainians continue their counter-offensive or rather offensive or you no, know, uh, or trying to get the, 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 the Russians offended at Shevchenko, Pelivka as well as Mikhilsky. Uh, Mikhilsky actually happened yesterday. Uh, Pelivka and Shevchenko happened the day before. And... Uh, the however the attack uh has not really you know uh you progress at least not from the report that i've seen but uh this just continue to show that the ukrainians are still you know trying very hard to 
push uh, the Russian lines and trying to recapture the the town or the, the town of Pelivka that they have lost. Uh, over at the Novo Mihailivka, uh, he called you to press the like button and then uh, somehow the fighting is reported over there on the 4th uh, by the Russian side. They actually, you know, the Russians actually reported attacking uh, Novo Mihailivka according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Uh, and uh, at Marinka, uh, there is a uh, fighting reported uh, on the 3rd uh, the Ukrainians attack and then on the 4th the Russians attack and uh, on the 5th there's a Mi-8 uh, transport helicopter getting shot down uh, near Marinka I believe this is probably uh, an attempt to evacuate a, a medivac uh, injured soldiers and uh, they just accidentally you know, got, uh, got caught into you know, a, a man pad or something like this let's see air defense facilities yeah so Probably a man pad that shot it down, or uh, no, or maybe the the helicopter pilot accidentally strayed a bit too high. Uh, there is fighting reported at Krasno Horivka, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry's report that was just uh just came out just five minutes ago, uh, which is why I managed to do the recording now. And um, over at the Pisky region, fighting is reported at Pervomaisky on the fourth, as well as at Vodian. Uh, this is reported by the Raiba, uh, the pro-Russian source, uh informing us that the Russians are still continuing to fight over at this region of Provomaisky and Vodian. We, the other sources, in term, basically is the Russian source, the Russian and the Ukrainian Defense Ministry did not mention about the fighting over here. Uh, Braiba is the only one that, that was talking about this. And uh, at Edivka, there is a Ukrainian a, uh, attempt to attack certain locations near Edivka. We have no idea where exactly this fighting is. Um, according to the Russian Defense Ministry, they said that it's trying to restore positions that were captured by the Russian side. But I have no idea where exactly this happened. Uh, moving on to the New York front. So at the New York front, the New, the New York front has come to life with the fight, fighting reported by Raiba uh, that happened that started yesterday where the Russian forces is attacking the Shumi Novgorodskoye line. So in case you are wondering what what is a no the Novgorodskoye? It's actually New York. Uh, this one, New York. So the 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 fighting of on this line. So you know, it's a Shumi to New York line, and which probably includes the Zelizne. And you have you can see this entire chain of uh, entrenchment. You can see this. You see there's entrenchment here. There's another one here. There's another very long one there. Uh. These are all very heavily defended regions. Uh, you can see it's all uh, full of uh, defensive positions, entrenched positions, you know, so many. So this entire line, the Ukrainians will definitely want to hold because of having this line break uh, might be very disastrous. Uh, but I believe the if I feel that if the Ukrainians are doing uh, their due diligence, they should be digging new lines uh, behind New York uh, they should they should uh, yeah and then um, fighting is reported uh, also near Mayos from Pif uh, Pifnishne according to the pro-Russian source Raiba they mentioned that uh, a sort of detachment from the 56 separate me uh, mechanized brigade of the armed forces of Ukraine tried to break through the defense line of the Russians and were, de were repulsed and uh, which is this town here that means they attack from this area and uh, most likely they are attacking towards Mayosk. So this is something that happened, uh, which means that this entire front start to flare up. I'm not sure if this fighting will continue to sustain, uh, but uh, because previously we do have fighting reported at uh, uh, Sharoko, uh, Sharoka Bauka, we have fighting at Zalisne, but no, all this fighting did not last. It's just simple skirmishes. So, but this looks like a start of a new offensive. We shall continue to monitor for the New York front. Over the Bakhmut front, the fighting continued to rage over at Kodyomivka with the Russian Defense Ministry say that the Ukrainians tried to attack Kodyomivka on the 3rd. And uh, in the latest report from the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, the, they say that there is fighting in the area of Kodyomivka, uh, an attack from the Russian side. So not sure where the Russians are pushing towards. And uh, there is also fighting reported at Andrivka. Andreevka. Uh, on the third, the Ukrainians uh, tried to attack Andreevka. Uh, on the fourth, 
uh, the Russians counter attack and uh, currently over the past 24 hours the Russians are still attacking uh, over in the area of Andrivka. Uh, not sure exactly in which direction uh, but given the look of this mapping uh, we likely to be seeing this as a fight northward to try to attack the southern part of Klishevka. At Klishevka itself uh, there is fighting reported on the 4th and on the 5th. Uh, the Russians are continuing to besiege this town over here and uh, over at Opaini uh, there is also fighting reported on the 4th and on the 5th and uh, based on uh, some uh, sources they said that the fighting is now within the town itself the, the Russian forces have entered Opaini itself so um, given the history of Russians entering towns uh, lately uh, it might suggest that Opaini might fall pretty soon there is a reinforcement reported at Bakhmut, accordingly, according to Russian, uh, pro-Russian sources, uh, that detachment of German and Czech uh, mercenaries have arrived uh, in Bakhmut. So, there's a lot of foreign fighters, if you ask me, a bit unusual. And also, I think I missed out also, uh, there is Sukhoi-25 shot down over Eurifka. I also noticed that maybe this might not be the Eurifka, it might be actually, you know, here. Eurifka. But I think tentatively I shall put, let's put it here, it's okay. I think this makes a little more sense for a Sukhoi 25 to be shot down. Uh, and then, however, there's another Sukhoi 25 that was shot down over at Park Roth. So, uh, so might be here, so might not be there. So it doesn't matter, no, it's just Sukhoi 25 getting shot down. Um, which does suggest that the Ukrainians are starting to you know, take the fight more seriously and uh, they are taking a bit more risk that that's why we are seeing more aircraft getting shot down uh but no given the distance again uh this kind of distance 40 40 kilometers away might suggest that the ukrainians do not have much of surface to air missiles near the front line to cover their fighters and for these fighters to be shot down so deep uh in their territory might suggest that the sukhoi 25 actually finished their mission and when they are flying back uh, they got shot down and this did not happen earlier in the war so not sure is it something to do with the, the lack of surface to air missile now or is it because the russians are actually deploying the sukhoi 50 uh sukhoi 57 more and that allowed the tracking and uh, shooting down of sukhoi 25 uh, or enemy aircraft deep within the enemy territory uh, more efficiently uh is anyone guess i'm, I'm just you know putting some things out the so continuing at the Bakhmut front at the Bakhmut, uh, there is fighting reported at Bakhmut in the southeastern part of Bakhmut. The fighting continues from the, for the fourth and the fifth. There's reinforcement reported to the northeast of Bakhmut along the Bakhmut Solidar Highway. Uh, this time, these are the 57 motorized infantry brigade of the Ukrainian armed forces, probably around this area here. Uh, but further up north, on the fourth, there is fighting reported at Pihorodne. Uh, so this actually uh, caused some uh, alarm. Uh, I think I saw on Twitter some pro-Ukrainian sources uh, or you no know, people are mm, questioning whether this happened. No, we this is not the first time we have reported fighting over at Pihorodne. So let's see, you know, whether this will be recurring uh, tomorrow because we did not have a report of fighting over this location uh, the, over the past twenty-four hours. Fighting continues at Bakhmutske. And uh, also at Soledad on the 4th and on the 5th. Sorry, this is below Horika. Why is it this here? Yeah, maybe I made a mistake. Anyway, Soledad on the 4th. And then uh, there's Yak fighting at Yakolivka as well as uh, on the 4th and on the 5th. This, uh, that's all from the Bakhmut front. At Rye Olesendrivka, uh, there's an S-300 getting destroyed. Usually, I do not report on the uh, air defense system getting destroyed. Uh, on the Ukrainian side. However, I want to highlight because this is uh, the distance of which this is destroyed. This is actually 20, 30 kilometers away from the front line. And and for this to be destroyed, also it, it does actually show us where the Ukrainians might be you know, deploying their surface to air missile systems. Um, quite a bit of distance from the front line. And uh, the fact that they are still so far away from the front line, but yet they get destroyed uh, also sounds alarm uh, in my opinion for the ukrainian side 
not looking very good but of course we are not seeing a lot of detailed reports from the ukrainian side maybe the russians are losing a lot of surface to air missiles as well so uh just keep that in mind that the information is not equal on the both sides you know because the ukrainians are keeping a lot of things uh quiet whereas the russian side uh, seems to you know boast a lot about what they destroyed uh over at the the severs front a severs front fighting is reported at bilohorivka so this comes despite that Bilohorivka is actually captured. The fighting is probably in the area of Bilohorivka as uh, I believe this entire area is all very heavily entrenched. So which is why the fighting continues despite that the town or the village itself is actually captured. So um, there is fighting reported at Berestovi uh, on the 4th and uh, Spurney went really quiet. Uh, we haven't seen... Uh, any report of fighting at Spurney since the second the past three days we didn't have any reports of fighting at Spurney I'm not sure if why this is the case unless maybe the Russians have captured it and the Ukrainians actually fall back to Ivano Darivka that might be a case but we did not even see the pro-Russian source talking about it so a bit weird uh, for a very contested uh, town to be not mentioned um, there's fighting reported at Vakan Okayamsky uh, after a hiatus uh, this time around over uh, by the uh, Ukrainian Defense Ministry just in the report that was just released and uh, there is fighting reported at Bilohorivka on the 4th and moving on to the Crimea front the Crimea front very interesting reports there is uh, according to the, uh, the Russian Defense Ministry there is fighting reported in the Serebryanka uh, uh, forest region so this is Serebryanka so I'm not sure if this forest itself uh, this entire forest is called the Ryanka Forest, uh, but it's, there is a uh, uh, Ukrainian forces in two different groups trying to attack towards uh, Crimea, and uh, so in two different groups trying to attack towards Crimea. However, they they got spotted and then they got uh, fired upon by the Russian uh, artillery or tanks or whatever because they say it's a fire strike. I'm not sure what kind of strike, uh, what kind of equipment they use to attack but it is actually kind of disrupted the ukrainian uh, attempt to attack towards crimea through the forest and uh, at dibrova uh, there is fighting uh uh near it uh, where three separate groups of uh recon forces was uh contacted by the russian forces uh the russians of course say they they, they destroyed the the DG drg or the or the sabotage and reconnaissance groups but of course this is just their impression uh who knows someone have run away um moving further up north in the criminal front as you can see by the icons the ukrainians continue to push for shivano popivka on the fourth and on the fifth and on, on the on at zeliska as well zeliska they on the third fourth and the fifth which means that the ukrainians continue to push very heavily towards this direction along the road i have uh did uh analysis or or you know the arrow arrow video uh regarding the ukrainian uh reasoning for you no know, attacking these positions do check it out it's on dpa war channel so you no know, i will link it at the end of this video so do check it out uh so you, you might get some context into why the ukrainians are attacking this region uh so heavily at Ploschanka, uh, the fighting uh was reported on the fourth where the ukrainians are attacking uh, somehow the Ukrainian Defense Ministry also reported that it's fighting uh, at Ploschanka. So it's, the likelihood is that the Ukrainians attack first and then the Russians actually do a counteroffensive uh, right after. So after that, nothing happened. Uh, so so that's all from the Crimea front. And over at Sviatovay front, fighting is, fighting is reported near uh, Raihoroka. Uh, the fighting is actually a, con uh, a contact of the ukrainian recon with the russian forces and uh that's all it's just a small skirmish and then further up north to the kuzemivka kuzemivka region the ukrainians tried to attack towards kuzemivka on the third and then on the fourth they they tried to attack again this time around uh from the from the area of Novoselivsky nearby it's not actually from Novoselivsky itself um however the the attack uh failed uh due to uh severe fire uh firing 
uh, from the Russian side. They said army airstrike, artillery, fire tanks, and heavy firing system at the Ukrainian position near Novoselivsky. So it's a preemptive strike in a way. So which is why it's a bombardment uh, icon. Uh, so no, that doesn't look very good. Moving to uh, this part here at Tapaivka, there's fighting reported at Tapaivka, uh, where a company tactical group was hit by gunfire. So since it's gunfire, this slightly is a fight over here. And uh, at near Kaislivka, the same happened where uh, fire attack on Ukrainian positions uh, disrupted a planned Ukrainian offensive. Uh, so it was a fire attack on the concentration of Ukrainian manpower and military equipment near Kaislevka. So, but that also shows that the Ukrainians are still uh, looking to attack Kaislevka or the region here over at the Kupians region. Uh, further up north, uh, at uh, Pershot Trasneve, Mikolaivka, Vyushana, you know, all these regions uh, continue to be really quiet, even at Varishna, Varishne region. Uh, we haven't seen any fighting over the past two three weeks already so um that's all for the summary for the day of 283 to 285 for the third and fifth of december and if you are not subscribed to this channel please subscribe to this channel because we are now racing towards hundred thousand subs by the end of this year um this is you no know, uh to is against the what the YouTube you know, is trying to do, they suppress the channel for half a year. So we are trying to you know, fight back against it. And uh, what, in one of the ways you can do is to help to press the like button. Because by pressing the like button, uh, YouTube algorithm will actually help to you know, share this video to more people. So um, the aim is 5,000 likes per video. You know. So let's see whether we can do it. Uh, we have already lost you know, one, one video already. We have already lost to the YouTube channel banning unit. We only got 3,000 over likes. So do it and I'll see you in the next update.